Two Broke Rednecks present... Sounds like Giles is about to attack. Ah! Creepy red face! So he's parked outside of a prison. No, that's a school. It's the same to me. She's a little young to have bitchy resting face. Fresno 911, I love that show! No, that's Reno 911. Oh. Don't talk to strangers, baby, don't you talk. Today has been much the same as any other day for Mrs. Williams as she busily prepares her family's noon meal. Which, strangely enough, is her family's old meal from yesterday. But it's a doctor's note excusing me from Brussels sprouts. No, it's not. It's written in crayon. Not impressed. Not even with the license number so carefully written on Earlene's school paper. Hope no one notices I'm reading Playboy behind this paper. But there is no doubt that she would very much be concerned if it were possible for her to read. Aw, oh, crap. The Cubs lost again. He is troubled by an urging inside that even he does not understand. Deep in his subconscious mind, he knows that he is wrong. But his rationalizations keep him from fighting his abnormal behavior. All he this knows is he wants to feel pretty. Molester. He is a dangerous, calculating criminal that knows no bounds in obtaining fulfillment of his desire. He is ill, mentally ill, and sensitive, with a wild, running imagination that will set him off at a moment's notice. And he'll think underwear gnomes are after him. He's back outside prison. School. Whatever. Same thing. Dude, we didn't need that much of a close-up. This man is still free to try once again to lure an innocent child into his perverted work. To the molester, there is no such thing as failure. Erlene's good judgment in his previous attempt was only a momentary setback. His abnormal urge deepened to the Hello, friendly neighborhood pervert. He chooses his innocent victim. This time, he will not fail. This time, he is sure. This time, he accidentally picks up a midget with clap. He's gonna pay her with five pieces of silver. But as he achieves success and his excitement mounts, he is unaware of two small eyes following his every move. Sadly, the kid's a deaf mute. When the molester's little victim fails to arrive home for lunch, the school receives a telephone call from a worried mother. No, we do not have Prince Albert in a can. Mother, as best she can, but carefully writes down all of the information available that is relative to the incident. That she knows nothing about. How the hell am I supposed to press one for English when I'm on a rotary phone? Damn, what a crazy bitch. Just kept gambling on about something. The missing girl and all of the information is carefully related to it. The principal is aware that missing children are not uncommon and prepares to search the Could he get any more nerdier? Usually are found playing with friends.
The child's teacher is contacted and questioned, and it is found that the little girl has not been seen since classes were dismissed for the lunch period. And the whole class is glad of that fact because she was a bitch. The little girl always goes home for her lunch. A search of the buildings and grounds proves fruitless. Because she went off to smoke some meth. ...to be taken before calling in the police for help. And that is the questioning of the other children who may have seen or played with the little girl. And they all told him that nobody plays with that there little girl because she has cooties. ...as to whether or not they have seen their playmate, and the answers are all the same. Which no is piss off! ...since the lunch period started. Is that the child molester? No, it's not. Well, he's a child and he looks like a molester. ...boy who even now is not aware of what he has seen. Upon his arrival at the playground, he too is questioned by the teacher regarding the little girl's disappearance. But this time there is a different answer. It's oh hell no! ...there is no doubt left as to what action has to be taken and quickly. And that is, find the man who took her and ask if he wants more because the teacher's sick of him. If Shatner gets out of that car, I'm leaving. A call is immediately put through to the police department and the child's mother as the latest bit of information is obtained. Which is nobody knows a damn thing. ...signs of duty in the area arrive. He is told briefly what has happened and given a complete physical description of the child and her clothing. The officer carefully writes down each bit of information in preparation of relaying the details to police headquarters in order that a radio broadcast may be transmitted to all police units. So and she's short and possible. annoying. Got it. Shortly after the arrival of the uniformed officer, a team of investigators working out of the Juvenile Bureau arrived to begin the formal investigation. They decided the principal knows more than he's telling him begin a waterboarding session. ...every bit of information available in an attempt to work out a logical plan of action. Her milkshake is curdled. I'm sexy and you throw up. Well, she's a lost cause. Come in my office and have some gin. Now, Billy, it's not polite to show girls your penis and tell them to suck on it. The investigation is launched with the re-questioning of the little boy. It has learned that the suspect has black hair and that he wore a sport shirt without a tie. Hey, are those bugle boy jeans? He was old and light in color, and he tells the investigators where the little girl was picked up and in what direction they traveled. Then he went into a monologue about cheese. The other children are also questioned in hope that someone might remember seeing some little thing that would help. But the answer is the same as before. They know nothing. They know snitches get then stitches. The girl offers the information that she knows something that happened the day before, but she didn't think it would help because her mother had told her to forget it. Her mother tells her to forget stuff all the time, which is why she'll have repressed memories when she grows up. Light colored cop. She says she did just as the teacher told all of the children to do if something like this should happen. She wrote down the license number of the car. So the license number is eat good food? In the meantime, all available police units are conducting a citywide search for the little girl and her abductor. Because the teacher wants him to come back and take the rest of her class. The search is more pointed, and in addition to the local radio broadcast to all Fresno police units, the information is transmitted to all law enforcement agencies in the Central Valley. You call back saying they don't care. Throughout the state. This has to be the worst episode of Cops. With the investigation underway, 
The detectives return to police headquarters where they anxiously await a return radio call from the Department of Motor Vehicles in Sacramento. Sadly, they are being ignored like the people waiting in line at the DMV. While waiting, they correlate their information and activities to make certain that no stone has been left unturned in the search for the little girl. Except that stone because it's been peed on. Before word is received from Sacramento, they are notified by telephone that a patrol car has found the vehicle and the suspect is in custody. No, Batman, we don't care if you think Robin is gay. Is being taken home to her mother. With his arrest, the molester's world of abnormality crumbles. Ah oh, man, didn't even get a hand job. He can give no reasons for his actions because he does not understand them. He is now even unable to rationalize and is I got some pictures of my female partner naked. Wanna see them? Isn't that considered cruel and unusual punishment? Next he'll put his hands together and make it fart sound. It is hoped that the treatment will prove successful. Only treatment he needs is a bullet to the head. The problem does not end with the solving of this or any number of other cases. Rather, it begins here in the home with each They are watching the static channel. I love the static channel. The dangers involved in child molesting against the background of peace and security in our homes. Ooh. The idea that it can't happen to us. But in this home, it almost did. There's that girl in her bitchy resting place again. Williams takes effect. It is difficult for her not to feel guilty. But she is aware that Erlene's good judgment was formed in this same environment. You the mean liquor and drug fueled? And attitudes can be learned through the faith and security afforded by the closely knit group known as the family. So in those days, people had used the newspaper and magazines to ignore their children rather than texting. Is that a bedtime at a certain hour? Turn that shit off. I can't hear myself ignoring you. It must be initiated in family routine. And the Williams have learned this lesson well. So they breathe a little easier now, but are more than ever aware of their responsibilities. Of ignoring they the children. They can never let up, but must constantly remind the children of the rules that will keep them safe from the problem of the child molester. They Want to do it in front of the TV? In this crime prevention program, which can be compared to a family insurance plan initiated by you. It costs you nothing, but can save you everything. Nothing worth really having is free. Are you sure Sid Davis wasn't involved in this film? Dear Bark Rednecks, we don't make bad movies, we make bad movies better.